Namaste everyone. Welcome to our 29th World Yoga Festival and the 8th International Day of Yoga celebration. Today's our topic is importance of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in yogic life. Our guest speaker will be Ajayriya Dr. T.P. Sashumarji, the chairman of the Shiksha and the former scientist at the ISRO and the deputy director of the Director General of uh, security at the cabinet secretary of india La last year we, we had an array of classes by him for bhagavad gita it was a beautiful uh, moments in a six months long program here without delay on to invite tp dr tp sashivumar ji floor is for namaskaram dilip ji Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sarchar, Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Veena Maha. Atnana Timirandasya, Nananjana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Meelidam, Tasmai Shri Guru Veena Maha. Sada Shiva Samaramba, Shankara Ajari Madhima, Asmat Ajari Variyandam Vande, Guru Param Bhara. Namaskar. Shuchita, Gita, Elizabeth, Bihari, Layam. Namaskaram to all of you. Yesterday I was listening to uh, what was happening on the fifth day of yoga celebrations under this World Yoga community. That is the time when I heard that topic is Bhagavad Gita and then I have to speak on that. The importance of yoga life. <clears throat> so, I don't know whether yoga life is different and normal life is different. <laughs> yoga life is different if you don't realize what is yoga. And if you realize yoga, what life you have is yoga, yoga life. Actually, for a yogi, the life which he leads is a normal life. But that life is what is yoga life for him. But I don't know, the modern uh, yoga practitioners would have thought if you do the physical magic circuses, then only you are a yogi. But I am from a Rama's tradition, Himalayan. We believe that meditation in action. Meditation, because there is no other translation for samadhi, we are unfortunate to use the word meditation. Samadhi in life. Every action which I do, how do I get to do it in the samadhi state? What is samadhi state? If I am put under electroencephalograph now. Electroencephalograph will give you the brain vibrations. You will see Dr. TPS doesn't have any change in my brain vibration now because I am talking not using my brain. I am talking from my feelings. When you are talking from your feelings, how can you be logically formatted words? How can it be used is a big question. It's very simple. How do a mother make a chapati or dosha or somebody put say decoration? Somebody, you have seen somebody stitching the net for the sweater when they travel in the train, they talk to people. You can see a TV program and then you can chat with somebody. Is it senseless or sensible? It's sensible. So how can you perform? While performing, your attitude is set and you are so skillful, it doesn't become a tax on your brain. You don't have to think. It becomes so casual. 
like a experienced driver driving he doesn't have to think for driving he can sing a song and then drive all that is possible because you are so casual in your actions casual doesn't mean you are not very serious you are serious you are to the point you use apt words a singer doesn't remember the songs maybe he don't have to struggle to remember the song he remembers without struggle but you need to have a good ambience and you cannot do it when somebody is disturbing you so you need a good performance is possible you have an attitude and you have the skill to perform and you have a good environment the attitude is internal the skill is the supportive process and the environment is the external you have a nature you have a behavior and you have a growth pattern in your life you have a value you have a role to play and you have a goal to achieve in your life all these are related to your basic rajasic tamasic satvic nature why did i put in that order because most commonly seen are rajasic maybe the next commonly seen are tamasic rarely what we see is the satvic otherwise satvic rajasic tamasic is the way in which they mention how do somebody become rajasic tamasic satvic it is based on what prakriti you have what is the prakriti you have you can have a vata prakriti pitta prakriti and kapha prakriti as per ayurvedic formulas what gives you a vata pitta kapha prakriti based on what is the food that you intake and what is that food basically food is made out of five elements so what are the five elements earth water air fire and space suppose you are a vata prakriti then you are someone who who may have air more somebody you may have water and uh, kapha means water will be more humidity will be more for them so based on that constituent nature that sort of a approach or that much of a love for that sort of a food also will be there and how do we make our rajasik satvik tamasik nature based on our indriyas capture knowledge from the external world or how are we going to react to the world with your indriyas so that is five indriyas you can see the relationship so we have satvik rajasik tamasik we have vata pitta kapha in the earth the nature and the prakriti which you have the way in which you behave with the nature and the nature itself is the five elements and you have five indriyas the i is related to the earth solid i can see ear is related to the liquid nose is related to the gas the smell tongue is related to the heat fire skin is related to the space so you have relationship with the indriyas to the elements and that makes your nature why am i saying all this that is because whatever karma we are supposed to do with the have a desire and the desire is your behavior pattern and the character which is determined by the elements which i spoke earlier so the purushartha if you wanted to explain the basic base in which the hindu dharma bharatiya shastra is built upon purushartha we have a desire which is kama the value system is determining what i wanted to what is the swabhava which i swabhava what is the nature in which i am there that is the dharmic nature 
so that I can become happier, self-realized person. And that self-realized person is not after death, not at the verge of death, because of your every activity which you do. You get into a state of moksha in this life every moment. So how do you get into that? There are many methods of doing sacrifices. That is another set of rituals which are called the Ardhihotra or Panjamahayatnam, etc. Et so the dharmic value, the value can be made higher and higher based on this. So these are nothing new because in your life, how do you clean yourself? And what is the purpose of cleaning? Why do you want to clean it? These are what is the basic essence of yoga. The essence of yoga is part of the great salutation to Patanjali by the saints who are followed him by saying Patanjali is the greatest of the greatest yoga jariya. Yogena chittasya padena vacha. Yogena chittasya. With the yoga, clean your chit. Chit is nearest translation could be mind, but that is not the translation. Where the feelings, desire, that's why I said the kama. That based on the kama in which you are living. The purushartha starts from the kama. So how do you clean your desire? By yoga. So yogena, chittasya, padena vacha. How do you communicate? Not just the words, oral communication. All the indriyas, how it reacts to the nature. Padena vacha. Malam sharirasya cha vaidyakena. Using the Ayurvedic technique, Clean your body. So who is this Patanjali? Many people call him as the yoga master. The traditional yoga starts with Patanjali. But it is not yoga alone. Yoga is for cleaning the feelings, manas. But unfortunately, people are stuck to the body postures and doing exercises has become yoga. Patanjali never thought about such a structure. Otherwise, many people would not have done prayer like this. His idea is to clean the manas. How do you make sure that you have a strong body? By the Ayurveda practices. So yoga doesn't stay by itself without Ayurveda. Yoga doesn't stay by itself by cleaning your environment with which you are associated. And how do you react to the environment? Then once you do that, or the stanza continues like this, Yopakaruttam Pravaram Muninam, you are the greatest of the greatest Rishi Patanjali. Oh Patanjali, what do I do? Pranjali Dhanatosmi, I salute you with the Anjali, with all the postrations and then I do the salutations to you, I bow in front of you. It's a great knowledge that needs to be spread with the basic understanding of what Patanjali means and how our traditional rishis have transferred this knowledge into the next generation. Otherwise, it becomes only a celebration without even going to the deeper knowledge. So that ability, how do you get it? That you get it with understanding different aspects of yoga. Which is the best textbook where it is mentioned? It is after Patanjali, maybe the practiced Patanjali or the mythological concept of Yoga Shastra has been dealt by the great text which we have 
and that is Ramayana. On that Ramayana, the Vasistha is the yoga teacher there. Who's yoga teacher? Rama's yoga teacher. The hero of Ramayana is Rama. For Rama, when he was young, he had psychological issues. He was not even respecting his father Dasharatha, who was not a normal casual laborer. He was Dasharatha. He had 10 vehicles. Dasharatha, that means one of the richest of the richest king. So he is not respecting his father, Rama. Therefore, he was admitted to the hospital of Vasishta and Vasishta gave 18 days of treatment. And that treatment is nearly, I, I don't know, maybe around 30,000 versus the whole first uh, content. Maybe the Lekhu Yoga Vasishta what is available to the public is 6,000 versus the original Yoga Vasishta is around 29 to 30,000. So that Yoga Vasishta is the first textbook of yoga in which it is a psychological process. Purne manasi sampurnam jagat sarvam sudhadravaihi upana guda padasya nanu charma strutai vabuhu. It is all in the mind. It is all in the manas. If you clean your manas, you can see the world the way you want. Is there a better definition to yoga than this? It is not there. It is nothing different from what Patanjali has given. Yoga, Anushasana. Yoga is what is to be self-disciplined, practiced. Self-practiced, you need not follow somebody's path. You need not have a poster in body. Yoga chitta prutti nirodaha. Yoga is to stop your unwanted process in your chit manas. That is what is clearly explained by either Yoga Vasishta or Vasishta or Patanjali. No difference. But then the Hatha Yoga Pradipika clearly says sharira manaso yoga paraspara manu prajet adhara adheya bhavena tapta jakhadayoriva the body and the mind is such related if you control the mind the body can be related and control the body the mind can also be controlled so for those people whose feelings are uncontrollable and you cannot get into the yoga path so easily one of the direct easiest method could be Exercises. That's why Yama Niyama Asana Pranayama Pratyahara Dharana Dhyana Samadhi. In which eight steps, only one is asana. Third step. Yama Niyama Pranayama is also to control your breathing. And therefore, you can control your feelings. Suppose you don't control your breath in the normal style. Pranayamena yukte na sarva yoga samaraha. If you control your breath normally, you will become non dis Disease will not be there. non diseased. You will be in ease. Ayukta abhyasa yogena. Do it in the wrong style. You can get a lot of diseases. Ayukta abhyasa yogena. Sarva yoga samudbhavaha. You will get all the diseases. So, not many steps are, in the eight steps only one is asana, exercise. The rest of the thing is what the strong part of yoga, which needs to be learned. How do you learn this? Either through the mythology, where the moral classes are being given, so that you know the yama, non-violence, niyama, discipline. And why the today's topic given is importance of yoga life, through Bhagavad Gita paths or importance of Bhagavad Gita in the yoga life. How that uh, Bhagavad Gita got this? There are explanations in the Bhagavad Gita itself. It came from Manu. The Surya gave it to Manu. Ikshwahu. And then that is the order in which I am educated in this. And therefore, I am giving you this lecture 
that is what krishna I, the use of god itself is not a good word ishwara murti murti cannot be god but unfortunately the translations which we are using which follows the biblio the bible standards we have started using the name god lord etc etc and if i use it it is only for the understanding of others but internally i mean murti and ishwara deva itself is a different word so each word has got a inner meaning inside that so the ishwara bhagavan krishna gave this lecture to his student his patient arjuna where did he get that knowledge i made it clear in my poetry book which is arrow from shadow the life of love poetry book which can be downloaded and then the 11th poem says arrow from the shadow in one janma you learn and in the other you teach yoga vasishta is the lecture on dharma and mind mind management rama was awarded 18 days of treda yuga by sage vasishta and krishna in dwapara gave lessons to arjuna in the war field so nothing is different from yoga vasishta in the bhagavad gita i just wanted to tell you that and it is not in one janma to the next janma don't think that you know one incarnation to another incarnation every day morning i wake up with the call of brahma and that brahma gives me the his wife's ability with my tongue to speak to you the saraswati which comes if i have got a creativity in my manas saraswati will come to my tongue if i have educated my creativity will start function what a yoga union is that and that union is there in the sankalpa of ishwara also in bharatiya shastra and then what next when understanding all these in the right sense what i achieve in my life is to get money and which gives me an action i can work peacefully in my life and what is the ultimate thing that is lakshmi money action vishnu and the evening i'll be able to peacefully go and sleep and that is samadhi with uh, shiva when i have the energy to sleep if i lose my energy i become sick so parvati is there beside you it's a combination so each day you take birth and in the next rebirth that is next day and again i will go back to the same routine life the karma you do in one janma today what i am doing will reflect on my tomorrow my tomorrow is my next janma an arrow from the shadow comes back to you in full force if i do something wrong today tomorrow it reflects on me to hunt you in the next janma so i explain the concept of rebirth in a different style in my poetry book it's not mine it is what the bhartiya sankalpa says the ishwara itself is a sankalpa and what is the purpose of all this to give us the energy to live in every day life so it is not arjuna who is in trouble who is in the war field every one of us are arjuna every one of us is in the first chapter of bhagavad gita what is the first chapter of bhagavad gita vishada in dukham not happy all the troubles are there i have got all the troubles in my life and that is my first chapter and that vishadam itself is called yoga you can imagine somebody's sadness is also yoga that is why arjuna vishada yoga the first chapter you can ask a question how somebody's sadness can be a yoga that itself is a yoga you can convert every misery also into a yoga so don't think that happy people are doing yoga and the yoga once you do you don't become unhappy no you have every day routine job to be done if you are in trouble what is to be done keep on practicing the most beautiful shloka probably in the 
Bhagavad Gita is when all these lecture is given to Arjuna, Arjuna says it is impracticable, not at all possible. It is like stopping the wind. That is what uh, Arjuna says. You know what Krishna peacefully says? Abhyase na deya. Practice, my son. It will become so easy for you. So every skill needs to be practiced multiple times. Then it becomes so simple for you. And Vishadam is turned into a Moksha Sanyasa Yoga. What is Moksha Sanyasa Yoga? Moksha is happiness. Moksha is happiness. And that happiness which comes from the desire. What is the root cause for all the Vishadam? The root cause for all the Vishadam is Kamam, Purushartam. The first step in Purushartam is Oh, I am not happy. The desire comes, you become unhappy. And what is the ultimate aim? To get into moksha. What is moksha? Happiness. So it starts with the vishadam. Desire causes vishadam. Which was the desire for the Arjunas. And then he wanted to have victory. Otherwise he will not go to the war field. And you are going to the war field with a action. And if you don't logically understand, that is why the second chapter is Sankhya Yoga. Logically analyze, what am I doing in this world? Is it the right thing to be done? Then get educated. Without education, nothing will become great to work in your life. So you have to learn. So when you learn that, what will happen? You get into knowledge. All that first nine chapters is full of knowledge. And that starts with the Sankhya Yoga, logical analysis, which could be the gist of Bhagavad Gita. So if you want to understand the whole yoga, the importance of Bhagavad Gita in the yogi life, the yoga life or the life itself, how do you get it? You get Sankhya Yoga, that is good enough. If you look at the Bhagavad Gita and ask a question, how many times the word yoga is used in that? You don't have to explain this or give an explanation to that because every chapter talks about the yoga, yoga, yoga. Starting from Vishada Yoga to Moksha, Sanyasa Yoga. Non-peaceful to peaceful life. Violent mind, manas to the silent manas. So violence to silence is Bhagavad Gita. Many people say that, you know, it's a, it's a preaching for violence. No, you are... You are internally in violence. You need to be in silence. Externally, you can be violent. That doesn't matter. Your BP should not go up. Your heartbeat has to be stable. Siddhapratna has to be the state in which you are talking or taking the problems in the world. And that will happen only when you have a combination of... What are the combination? And that is what is explained or maybe the every chapter ending by the Bhashyakara, the interpreter, the chapter wise Krishna did not give lecture. But for the people to understand it has been put into different chapters. So while putting into different chapter, end of every chapter, the Bhagavad Gita is Upanishads, Brahma Vidya. So the essence come from the Veda. So where is the root of yoga? Vedas, knowledge. What is the purpose of yoga? Knowledge. If you cannot explain every bit of life, the reason behind it, logically analyze it, then you are not a yogi. You can be a practitioner who gives practice in the asanas. You cannot be a yogi. Brahma Vidya has to be addressed. Brahma Vidya, Yoga Shastra. It is a Yoga Shastra. The Shastra of Yoga, the science of Yoga needs to be understood. That is, understand the feeling, psychology. You are a psychology master. You need to be a mentor. Then you understand the problems of your mentees. So here, Arjuna is a mentee, Krishna is a mentor. And that is why there has to be a sambhada. Discussion should happen. Question should come. Then only the relevance of Bhagavad Gita can be understood. So what is the purpose of this? Prajodayat. Enlighten. Take them to the higher level. An inspirational, intellectual, intuitional, pratna, 
the metha has to be higher and higher how do you take that based on what the postulate which i made with the three gunas the panchabhutas everything comes into bhagavad gita here and there the three gunas beautifully explained and that is what happens to you in your life niryoga kshema atmavan bhagavad gita second chapter talks about niryoga kshema atmavan what is niryoga kshema atmavan triguna vishaya veda nistrai gunyo bhavarjuna nurdondo nitya satvastho nurdondo confusion should not be there you have to be concretized in your thoughts without confusion yavanartha udapa udapane sarvatra sambhudotake tavan sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijanata you have to have that ability of a brahmin what is the brahmin understand that knowledge which gives you that feeling of the higher self that is what is essential to become the higher and higher in the world yogastha kuru karmani sangam tuktva dhananjaya sangam tuktva dhananjaya i think it is the 48th shloka second chapter yeah 48th shloka in the second chapter so what does it say yogastha kuru karmani sangam tuktva dhananjaya don't get binded with your people that is what the problem is first chapter if you look at it he has got lot of problems arjuna what is the problem he is bounded sangam sangam tuktva dhananjaya get out of that boundedness then you will become peaceful in your life siddhya asiddhyo samo bhutva whether you have the ability or not the siddhya asiddho whether you are having the siddhi or asiddhi samo bhutva look at everybody equal samatvam yoga uchyate so what is yoga treating everybody equal that ability is what is yoga you have to consider everyone in this world every living being is that's why i said we have got all the daily practice of acharyas even when you do puja for the bhagavan ishwara the first puja is done to the bhutas every living being who were living in that field before you constructed the temple who were the ownership for that land that may be small flies that may be small worms that may be small creatures who lived there when you vacated them to make the uh, place for you you do puja to them what a great and there are temples in which before you feed the ishwara bhagavan you feed the buddha that's why called sri buddha bali what a great concept is that these are all part of yoga so any activity which you do in a temple is also a yoga and who is a yogi there the priest is supposed to be a yogi whether he has that quality or not that depends on whether he is a real priest or not suppose he is a real priest what will happen to him he will have sapta shuddhi pranavana vyarodha anasamana me shuddhyan dam jodireham virja vipatma bhuya sangha swaha vakmana chakshu sotra gana jikware do buddhya agri sangalpa ve shuddhyan dam ki sangalpa will be clean you can imagine the breath will be clean his indriyas will be clean his prana the air which you take inside and breathe out will be equally clean no oxygen content more and carbon dioxide more when he breathes in and breathes out it has to be equally clean and that is what it, that then what will happen to you such a person yoga karma sukaushalam yoga karma sukaushalam what is the ultimate aim of all this my day to day activity need to be very 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 smart not just a smart because the value system also comes today's education make your children smart not enough they have to be good also so what is the purpose of education good and smart buddhi yukto jahati ita buddhi yukto jahati ita ubhe which is that uh, yeah 50th shloka buddhi yukto jahati ha 
ഉവെ സുഹൃത ദുഷ്കൃതേ തസ്മാത് യോഗായ ഉജ്വസ്യ therefore as per yoga prescription you get up yoga karma sukha kushalam what is the purpose of yoga to make you active with all the kushalata what is kushalata smartness so you want to be a smart person who does every action with all the ability yoga is the practice is it not a part of every day life activity it is but i don't know whether people understood bhagavad gita in this style i don't know whether people understood yoga in this style but i am so happy dilip ji has mentioned this topic and given to me which is allowing me to think in this style and that's 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 a great opportunity suti vipradipannate tada sthasyati sthasyati nischala samadha samadha vachala buddhi സമാധാവജലാബുദ്ധി സമാധാവജലാബുദ്ധി വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ ബുദ്ധി വിച്ച് യു റിക്കർ യു റൈറ്റ് ടു ബി ഇന്റലിജന്റ് ലുക്ക് ഇറ്റ് തിങ്സ് സോ ലോജിക്കലി യോഗവ വാപ്സ്യസി ദൻ വാട്ട് ലാപ്പൺ you get into yoga it is not you practice yoga you become a yogi by making your buddhi very active you have to be intelligent not every every person on the street can practice yoga that's a different matter but the real yoga in bhagavad gita as prescribed by patanjali as described by vyasa as described by the vasishta as krishna taught arjuna that you need intelligent people not everybody can do it you have to understand and if it is not what is to be done abhyasena tu kaunteya practice it then it becomes easy for you you need to spend the time understand then what will happen as in the 67th shloka i think in the second chapter 67th shloka it talks about i am just skipping and then going shloka by shloka indriyanam hijaratam the five sensory organs i said it is coming here indriyanam hijaratam yen manonu vidhiyate tadasya haradi pratnam vayurnava vivambasi like a wind takes the boat in the water the wind will take the boat in the water and crossing the river your indriya will flow along with the beautiful life and it just flows without restrictions and it will take the right path yen manonu vidhiyate as controlled by my mana my manas not it goes here and there so it is not controlling the manas the manas controlling the indriya no it flows tadasya haradi pratnam beautifully the pratna the pratna will happen in such a fashion the indriyas and the the indriyas all the sensory organs and the manas your feelings will get in entangled and you get into that intellect which is already explained everything will join together and submit to the atma which is inside you and such people will become spiritual people and atmiya purushas no confusions and that ability comes only when you are the nana karma sanyasa yoga what a beautiful nana karma sanyasa yoga your action becomes with knowledge and without the boundedness if you have boundedness problems will come no escape okay i don't want let me go without this also i can live in this world then problems are not there when you get attached to the materialistic non materialistic relationship you get entangled and that is what the reason for all the problems that's what bhagavad gita says you have to be free what is the best thing in the world freedom don't think no war in the world is fought for materialistic things not for any anything else only one reason that is freedom and here in the fourth chapter nana karma sanyasa yoga himam vivasvate yogam 
This is the tradition of the Yoga Shastra which I am teaching. That is what Krishna says. No, Krishna Ishwara doesn't take the credit to this is my knowledge. He says the antiquity of yoga comes from Krishna, Surya, Manu, Ikshahu, and that is the tradition which Brahma gave it to Mariji. And Mariji gave it to Kashyapa. Kashyapa gave it to Surya. Surya gave it to Manu. That's how it came to Ishwara. But then who was the origin for that? Vishnu. So I only gave this and then came back and then after a long time, what happened? It lost its priority. People forgot. That is why I am teaching you now. Hey Arjuna, not for you, for the generations to come. Evam parambara praktam imam rajasyo vidu sakala neha mahata yogo mashta parandava By practice, by not practicing also it is lost. Therefore we lost it. That is why I am able to I wanted to teach you now. That's what Krishna says. So, Evaya, Maya, Yedya, Yoga, Prata, Puratana, Bhakto, Sime, Sakha, Chedi, Rehasyam, Sheta, Uttamam. You learn this and then practice. It will become great for you. Rehasyam. It's a very, very secret knowledge. Not to be taught to everyone in the world. Those who are really required, they come and then only teach them. That is what is essentially required. So this goes, the explanation goes. And fifth chapter, Karma Yoga. Karma Sanyasa Yoga. The Karma Yoga is not Karma Yoga in Bhagavad Gita. Karma Sanyasa Yoga. Do action without any expectation of my selfish result. Don't say no result. Every action has a result. But I am not selfish for my purpose, I don't. I am not doing it for my purpose. It is for somebody else. Loka upakaraya. For some people in this world, let them use the benefit of whatever action I am doing. And that action is what is called karma. Not everyday activity which I do to survive my life is not karma. Such sannyasam karmanam krishna punar yogam just. Shamsasi, then you will get that yoga style. Yet Sreya, Eta Yoga, then you will raise that will give you benefit of Sreya. That will give you the benefit of Sreya. You will become popular, famous, not when you do things for your purpose. Tanme Bhuhi Sunishayam. You can think about this and decide whether it is useful for you. And that Sreya, what gives is what I want. That knowledge for this is what I want. That's what Arjuna asks. What a great Shishya Arjuna became when four chapters were given. He is looking for that prescription to him so that he can do something good for the world. Sanya, Sakkarma, Yogascha, Nisreya, Nisreya, Sagara, Ubo. Tayostu karma sanyasa karma yoga vishashade. What is called karma yoga is explained here. Which gives benefit for others. Which gives you a general ability to help others. And then only it can. And who has to? You cannot do it when you are not a pandita. You have to be a pandita for that. Sankhya yoga pratakbala. Pravadan dina pandidaha, ekavap sestya, samyak, ubayor, vintade, palam. You have to be a pandita to get into that ability. What a great, very great knowledge. You have to have that knowledge so that you can get into higher and higher life. So it is knowledge giving. That is what important here. Knowledge is important. Sixth chapter also remains or continues with the same message. Dhyana Yoga. The sixth chapter Dhyana Yoga also says, Anasrida karma bhalam karyam karma karodhiya 
സന്യാസി after dhyana yoga explained by the 6th chapter up to 7 22nd shloka i think yeah 22nd shloka 23rd shloka it is being explained after that arjuna is not very 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 comfortable what makes a yogi the characteristics is explained in the rest of the shlokas and if you look at it you can see practically being in this world how to do your activity in everyday life is what is being explained there സമദർശന disturb you further that is what it is so if you can do that an unsuccessful yogi what will happen yogis too can become unsuccessful not enough don't leave it in the middle keep on continuing that is what the bhagavan says the sixth chapter end with 47th shloka yeah 47th shloka yoga naam api sarvesham സോൾ സോ യുവർ മനസ് emotional troubling turbulent feelings which troubles you with the logical buddhi put them together join in the soul then you are the most successful person in the world that's what the sixth chapter ends with then again seventh chapter continues nana vitnana yoga practical knowledge and the theoretical knowledge how does it implies and what method is to be used to be understand what can be done what cannot be done how do you distinguish them all that is being explained then eighth chapter what does it say the eighth chapter talks about akshara brahma yoga which is aksharam without the charam charam is end which cannot be destroyed and such non destroyable brahma yogam you be a creative person even if you do something you are creative you can recreate it again so don't worry about the money lost in this world you can again create money because you are the person you are the person that ability is strongly inside your attitude is strong and your skill is good and you don't worry about the environment your performance will become always successful That's what the Bhagavan says. Anda kali cama me vasmarin mukwa kali beram yak prayaasi samam bhavam yadi sastya samshaya ha. Anda kali cha. The last moment also you come to me. Losing everything. Don't lose your heart. Attitude. Come to me. I am there with you. I will make you happy. Only when when ninth chapter, twenty second sloka. അനന്യശ്ചിന്തയന്തോമാം 
yoga kshemam that is what is yoga kshemam in life every one of us want all this what is our worry whatever wealth i got it should not be lost whatever knowledge i have should not be lost whatever energy which i have should not be lost whatever fame i have should not be lost whatever happiness i have need to be retained bhagavan says i will guarantee you all this when anandesh chintayam toma full attention concentration you be with me surrender to me what is that me action action with the devotion without the having blindness confirm with the firm belief in me start doing actions ye jana paryupasati tesham nitya abhiyuktanam yoga kshemam mahamya i will take care of such people and i will support you throughout in your life that is what bhagwan says i can go on and on but i think that's not my intention i thought i'll speak less than half an hour so that maybe rest of the time can be on talk generally that is what i do for one hour now today we have more time so i thought i'll speak up to 45 to 50 minutes i think it's done 50 minutes is over maybe up to ninth chapter that's what i thought i will describe a little bit and then i'll open up for questions that's what i'm supposed to good enough dilip ji yeah that's good see the questions coming who is okay. asking the question sujitha van da has a question Uh, i would request may i yeah sujitha yeah. welcome yeah um i would request you to repeat uh, uh, what you spoke about the 47th shloka of the 6th chapter you said Sujita. characteristics of a yogi how yeah. do you become a successful yogi 47th shloka of 6th chapter yeah that is the last shloka you said one has to uh, practice rightly to avoid failing and there are certain characteristics of a true successful yogi yeah that is what is being explained in the all the characteristic what is required for a yogi is explained and so if you could just highlight a few characteristics that can be imbibed and practiced actually the shortest of the shortest could be what is the ashtanga yoga but in bhagavad gita it is more like a theoretical part mm -hmm. the atma samyamana yoga ends with the, the nana vitnana yoga and in nana vitnana yoga you will see what are all the different uh, 23 steps are there and then the next will come with the, all the sabhavas the prakriti mm -hmm. the triguna when it is explained again that will come part of it how to control your trigona that is what briefly i explained in the beginning saying that the panchabhuta control is so that your input inside your manas where does it come in bhagavad gita 15th chapter if you want to complete it i will have to go to 15th chapter to say what food you have to eat so what i did was beginning the 15th chapter all that food prescriptions i made it to one method called you no know, bada pitta kapha gives you what is the food what you have to take what is no so if i have to be a typical yogi i need to know how to manage the pancha bhutas yeah and you need to know with, sync with uh, the bhutas of the cosmos with the bhutas and create such a food see for example what is that food what you have to take is also explained kattam lavana tushna 15th chapter if you look at it it will explain you what food is to be taken okay. so you cannot be a yogi with having a different food which is not uh, you no know, acceptable to you you are definitely food determines your uh, character hmm. the basic because uh, microbiotics and macrobiotics of today's yeah because it uh, somewhere influences the gunas yeah so the 15th chapter tells you what food is to be taken so it goes in different different chapters in the next subsequent chapters okay yeah, yeah. thank you sir yeah sujitha 
Namaskar Guruji, Pranam Acharyaji. Nice to listen to you always. Uh, Acharyaji, when you say it should be Karma Sanyas Yoga, yeah. so, and we should be detached from the result, or uh, or you should be detached with the person you are doing action or something. You try to explain. I want to just understand uh, more how much you should be detached. When uh, sometimes attachment motivates you to do certain actions, then uh, karma is provoked by attachment. How if we detach ourselves so much, then aren't we a karma? I, I just wanted this kind of a discussion from you, but. Suchita, you can clearly understand when I am using words, I never use the word attached, detached. If I am not attached to Dilipji, I will not come for this class at all. I am attached to him. But if he doesn't call me, I will not become gloomy, anger, distrust and all that will not become. So it is not having attachment is not the word. I am not binded to him. Okay. I will still do my job which I am supposed to do. I am not to assume that Shuchita is in contact with me. I am happy because I am attached to you. Okay. If you don't talk to me, yeah, I am detached with you. But I am not binded to you. If you don't talk to me, oh, what happened? Why she is not talking to me? And then I will keep uh, no, distrust. Binding is different from attachment. Yoga, yoga, yoga is bonding. You have to have bondage only with the Bhagavan. Who is that Bhagavan? Your Atma. What is your Atma internally? Go inside you. That is not you want to be happy externally, you cannot search happiness at all. You have to be internalized by you as well. Then, and, yeah. you, uh, and second, one more question when you talk yeah. about shadow, uh, arrow from the shed, you talk about uh, our uh, janmas or whatever we carry on from the last previous life. We yeah. all be previous. The previous life is, I am talking to you today. Assume that I got angry, I had a dashing with you. Tomorrow when I meet you, definitely some remembrance will come to me. Yesterday is my earlier janma and today is my next janma. That is why we keep saying we have seven janmas. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Seven janmas. After seven janma, again Monday will come. That's it. Very simple. Okay. How do you get rid? How do you get rid of this, Papa? You should not have any other thoughts other than this only. Then that will keep troubling you. But assume today we have a different topic to discuss. Then what will happen? We get engaged with that, and then we may agree on that. So whatever conflict we had earlier is forgotten. So what is the method? Do your activity more and more and more and more more and more more and more so that you are filled with actions. That is what we have a common uh, uh, no master for me and Dilipji. Nitya Chaitanya Yeti. Yeti always says, God will extend my life as long as he wants, not me, as long as he wants. How he will extend my life as long as he wants? Take a lot of activity which is filling me. Take a lot of activity which is filling me so that God will think this fellow, let him live for longer time to serve the society. Good enough. Yes. Nimisham jolitam prayam nadu dhuma yitum chiram. Every moment be like a fire. Fill it, fill it. Yeah. yeah. There is one question by Arti Verma which is asked what is the basic philosophy difference between Bhagavad Gita, Yoga, and Patanjali? No difference. Both are same. Here also it is, and that is what in the beginning I explained. Probably Arati left, uh, lost my first few um, 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes what I was talking about was the Patanjali's Yoga Shastra, not only Bhagavad Gita. I also mentioned Vasishta, Yoga Vasishta, which is also Yoga Shastra. 
who is the master of yoga in philosophy terms it is vasishta yoga vasishta the biggest book of yoga the medical textbook of yoga the psychiatry textbook the handbook for the psychotherapist in the world is ramayana yoga vasishta that also i referred and in that exactly what is explained is what is in bhagavad gita what is in bhagavad gita what is in ramayana yoga vasishta is what is exactly there in the patanjali's yoga sutras but that yoga sutra is to be understood not as only the eight steps and one of the step is only being taken and then you think that is yoga then totally wrong you did not understood even one of millions of one by million that portion also yoga is not understood by most of the people who speaks about yoga that is the pathetic state of world today you learn only 0.0 the micro knowledge and blow it up and say same you no know, if dr tpa speak something on bhagavad gita last year and this year when i speak i should have something else to add otherwise i am not learning if i am not learning i am unfit to teach so nothing wrong yeah you have not understood nothing wrong learn yoga vasishta i refer yoga vasishta and i summarize the yoga vasishta also for me manasi sampurnam jagat sarvam sudhadravaihi upana guda padasya nanu charma strudaiva muhu is it not controlling the manas controlling the buddhi understanding the sthita pratna without bindedness i am not worried about how others look at me i am ready to make my path with the, the smoothest way with all smiles around that somebody doesn't give me happiness doesn't matter i am happy then nobody can make me unhappy in this world i am in ease how can somebody make me diseased nobody can make me diseased if i decide to be in ease right ease and disease is a feeling ease and disease is a feeling the feeling is inside you so nothing external matters to you is it not about bhagavad gita says nothing matters to you shariram doesn't matter udhare atman atmanam one of the most important shloka i forgot udhare atman atmanam raise your atma manas to the highest level which level udhare atman atmanam atma nam avasadhaye atmai vahyatmano bandhu atmai varipura manaha which shloka is that sixth chapter fifth shloka ಉದ್ಧರೆಯೋಗಂಧುಮಸಾಧಯ but unfortunately patanjali did not ask anybody to uh shirshasana stand on your head was not patanjali's and patanjali never asked anybody to do surya namaskara yoga sutra doesn't have all this these are all additions these are all additions but that is the way it is to be marketed but then at least some people must be ready to learn the essence and then say this is what is the actual bhartiya shastra that is the purpose of celebrations so that some people are interested so i'm so happy that this part is made into one one session full for me namaskar dilip ji thank you that is, did not happen last year but this year i'm i'm so happy that you know the learning part is also in, put into thank you any other question gabriel namaskar namaskar okay so was hanuman himself sitting above or was that just a flag yeah hanuman heard all this in the bhagavad gita because hanuman is one of the chiranjeevi chiranjeevi means who doesn't have death so you can see hanuman in the ramayana treta yuga and in the next yuga dwapara yuga also 
there are many many such characters in the whole purana itihasas the purana itihasas are the epics which are in bharatiya shastra and one is hanuman second one is vyasa and third one is kripacharya fourth one is vibhishana fifth one is ashwatthama there are so many and one of them is hanuman parashurama is also like that parashurama you can see appearing in many places so hanuman was there hanuman is the man of wind the bhagwan ishwara god bad translation by me again god of wind that is why on the flag the wind will be there so he represents the wind he gives you the direction like our uh, we have got that every every army vehicle will have a wind uh, on the top of it to find out which direction the wind comes so that you are uh, even the missile which you are sending can be directed normally assume that there is a big wind and your arrow goes in one direction it will go somewhere else so who is giving this information to arjuna anyone what a great knowledge you know it says i know the power of wind that is what it means symbolically that is what it means yeah. good question gabriel i never interpreted like this <laughs> so giving me chance for making me to think like this and and the biggest to wonder is uh, hanuman is not from the today's india is, okay no do it is part of india it is in the andaman andaman nicobar islands and the kripacharya is from iran vibhishana is from sri lanka and different parts of the world is connected in the epics so don't think that uh, these incident happened in a small place it happened international so we have a geographical distribution of all these area then only you can visualize the the magnanimity of the whole activity i have one more question it's yeah. not important this is a trivial detail a mundane aspect but yeah. is there a reason why more research isn't being done into discovering certain information as far as the like i said this is the trivial aspect so it's not not very important but the uh age of of these um to to val- verify the artifacts and some of the the things which may be under the water um in current current state yeah that is basically because all the today's dating of the timings of all these activities as per the english britishers historians perspective which is not at all tallying with the descriptions given in the poems of our epics right so we are entitled to do some research to find out and say that what the historians described prescribed is not correct because veda cannot be 5000 years old because vedas are being part of the earlier yuga which is much much more millions of years old you know correct so for lakhs even every day ritual which is being chanted by every priest in the temple talks about the time scale of all these activities so it cannot be today's it cannot be 3 i mean uh, 5000 years it has to be more than lakhs and lakhs of years but what is happened when historians have to explain things in tandem with what happened in the west they will have to put a time scale and say this is the time scale and that is being spread all over the world and everybody studied the so called academicians are all filled with this knowledge if you don't write that in your examination you will fail in history classes right understood so it has become an academic compulsion on people and uh, and therefore what has happened most of the people became disbelievers of the mythological facts i call it as mythological facts what it therefore you can see not only not only the mythology 
but the poetical explanations given by great poets of india like kalidasa who has explained what is kailash okay in his textbook where a yaksha is going to see shiva is being explained he is a poet who lived in this world his poetries are printed and then learned and in which book he explains what was the knowledge the predecessors had so he was explaining my predecessors has this knowledge so he is not quoting the history because britishers never made history by that time but it therefore the datings are not uh, correct at all it is totally wrong therefore what is being done is we have to take literature we have to take mythology we have to understand the geography and geophysical movements of the world then we will understand once upon a time lanka and india was very close sri lanka and india was very close otherwise hanuman cannot jump he cannot make a bridge so when during that time how much distance it was close so you rebuild or reconstruct the geophysical movement so we have to go very very far that goes into 200 million years and when we explain that then you will understand whatever be being chanted every day the mahasankalpa which we have saptavada vannundari ekaligale prathama pade which talks about what point of time 17 mannuntaras are over 192 crores of years have been passed in this world all these are great knowledge which are part of the literature being chanted every day by every priest in this country where they did not had a printed textbook to follow which was all from the ear to the mouth to the ear to the mouth here say here say here say can you imagine that is being chanted from maybe 3000 km to the north to south east to west one man shankaracharya recreated that system of chanting so don't you think it worth study that's it that's it absolutely any other questions comments uh roma vani okay yes proceed namaskar, namaskar. very great very grateful to have been invited to this evening's discourse Uh, but romavani your face is not seen oh okay your, okay uh, other part of the world where there is no sunlight <laughs> no electricity or what uh-huh. mm. <laughs> i'll just check if the video works yeah uh, okay N- yes yeah now we can so I'm very grateful to have been invited this for this evening's discourse, Dr. Sir, and uh, nice to be seeing Guruji also there. What would you say is the easiest yoga mm-hmm. for the world today? Very very simple. <laughs> I am a meditation master from Himalayan tradition. Swami Rama is my guru, but I will still tell. the best meditation is going and sleeping on your mother's lap you know when people become upset young child will go and sleep on their mother lap facing the head on their lap they don't look at the mother's face look at the down and then your breathing can be felt your belly will go up and down whenever a teenager feels upset about their parents how do they go to the bed upset down keeping the hand like this and then they will do like this right what will happen the belly goes up and down your violent mind will become silent like that doctor tps meditation just follow that i have a small youtube of 20 minutes meditation i called it meditation knowingly it is not meditation because that's only method to make people to remember that's only breathing practice so what is the best practice in the world 
for yoga silent concentration on your breath when you breathe lying the tummy touching the bed or the ground your tummy will go up and down just feel it and then take the tear throughout your body and then ask that prana that's called prana prana is energy ask your prana to go to your leg if you have a leg pain ask that prana to go to every tip of your body let it go to the ear tips nostrils air goes to you it goes by default but knowing it is your feeling <laughs> when you drink drink you no know, chilled water in the summer you know the water is going and that is the feeling of happiness similarly the air goes inside you get a feeling the other day i went to one of the ashrams here where pregnant women were given yoga exercise i called that instructor during the tea time publicly i cannot scold her and that lady instructor i called and said what test to put in your teaching actually it will trouble that lady because you are asking them to sit on the floor with the the legs posture in the specific style in which you learned it from yoga no ask them to put their seat little higher give them a yoga brick so that you can sit on top your leg will become your backbone will become automatically straight otherwise i have immediately on that day evening i put a how to sit to on yoga poster i put a small 5 minutes video mm-hmm. look at dr tps yoga sitting that video you will get understood so how to sit how to sleep if you know these two things for last 30 32 years dr tps 60 kg if somebody weigh me on a weighing machine and if it is 61 or 59 i will ask change the weighing machine get a better one that is wrong i am perfect <laughs> and help reserve is the gita because we were discussing the various uh, yogas there uh, what would you say is uh, good for a human being of th- this era to practice is it karma yoga bhakti yoga yana yoga what what should one go for actually there is no difference all these are one and the same bhakti is devotion don't you think when dr tps is talking in the seminar is it only nana yoga which i am doing am i not committed to devoted totally involved am i not talking with the passion and the bhakti when roma is asking a question am i not seeing that no i want to see you without seeing also i can give answer right correct or not that is my passion so i am doing anything with the passion i will enjoy if i am cooking i cook you can see dr tps cooking you can see in passion i am cooking you can see dr tps driving when i drive i passionate in driving i enjoy driving oh what the trouble is this i cannot drive i cannot drive i am doing a karma driving is my karma but should i not enjoy where are you from roma uh from uh, india kashmir but presently you are in kashmir yes i am here wonderful, wonderful. if i get a chance i love to drive on the kashmir valleys yes. do i Most... think that i will complain about the season is not good road is not good politics is not good and then trouble my mind or i enjoy that moment so what bhagavad gita says is now you have come to the war field for what to fight don't think about my past he said not arjuna don't you know that you are going to fight with your cousins previous night do they become your relatives just now or yesterday also they were your relatives you could have not attended to the examination or interview why are you coming to the exam hall and says that no what is this trouble of examination you must enjoy exam so every day when i am writing examination i am enjoying right when i am doing my job i must enjoy if i don't enjoy na karma <laughs> what a trouble why do you do this did somebody push you inside nobody pushed you you came voluntarily right now having attending this uh, gida or this yoga program you must enjoy this otherwise you all have this liberty to quit but once you are here i am enjoying you should also enjoy that's it. that's our karma it is there every day so 
your bhakti is there your karma will become only knowledgeable otherwise it's only like you know oh i am attending that's it but no knowledge goes into then you will see oh that lecture was boring why is it boring because you did not use the snana you have to make it as your part right okay assume you don't understand somebody don't understand what is manas gabriel may not understand what is manas because it's not an english word so what you should do you should go and google and find out or get back to me see that is what the persuasion you should have that attitude setting is what is required if that attitude setting is not there then you will find oh i did not understand half of it if you did not understand you have to do abhyase na to kaun deya that's what i keep saying every activity which you do can be related to what three times i taught hmm. only three times i taught but i read maybe thousand times like did it finish no every time i reinvent do something new that is what is learning so learning is there action karma is there and also my passion is there that is what the three and for what my raja yoga my administrative ability my contemplation my connection everybody in this world require only three things fame dhanam artham artham doesn't mean money my influence on somebody else is also my artham for me i have got thousand hundred times to gulf not even single time i paid my ticket by myself somebody took me right that is my artham then next one is knowledge so if three things can be balanced then what you get is happiness so these are all part of our life that's how we should run so similarly the yogas also at yeah. different period or with different emotions the gyana and the karma and the bhakti should all come together yes at every level and in which role which goal which value system i have will determine the balancing ability that is also essential mm -hmm. thank you sure sure the roy uh, pranam no. i wanted to ask you one thing you said about meditation that it is counting or it is knowing your breath right how you no, are breathing i did not say that that is the simplest of the pranayama technique which can take you very close to samadhi so you when we when i tried meditation i tried and it is like every other thought processes are coming other than my concentrating on my breathing or whatever it is so i i feel that i can't do meditation so somewhere i feel miss it shweta i'll tell you 99.99 percentage of the so called bogus meditators great masters also will not be able to meditate it's all bogus <laughs> so i feel i am a misfit they, they person meditation but they themselves will think about that's how see what they will do is they will tell you meditate and they will look at one way where everybody is closing their eyes actually you don't have to meditation is a slow process in which how do i explain sheda what is the taste of water when you are feeling thirsty you can only understand the taste of water right so yeah. i tried meditation i am doing meditation i practiced meditation for half an hour these are all stupid and waste of life don't do that you have to get into dhyana dharana dharana is what concentration so when i am asking you to concentrate on the breath the air passing your body automatically your other thoughts will go okay. understood that is closed meditation that's what i said i don't tell that is meditation but if you are enjoying that if you are enjoying that you are blessed but you are enjoying not enjoying that and you are thinking about tomorrow what class i have to take whether i will miss the bus tomorrow whether i have to scold my husband scold my children scold my kid and then what will happen all that uh, traffic jam is with you then as vivekananda says nobody can meditate on cross roads vivekananda also said you want to learn meditation the easiest method is take you down to the water and then close your nose and then close your ears and then put you in water to ask what are you thinking during that time 
survival will you think about troubles of the world will you think about the children will you think about the practical life nothing no pain will be there what you will think is i want one breath breath and during that time you are put up then you will enjoy that breath and that if you can enjoy that is meditation i'll try Understood. Thank you. <laughs> that concentration, you. your breathing. That's why I said, Doctor TPS meditation. Don't. I have put my guru's pictures there. That for once you see. But listen to that, which I did maybe two thousand five. I did it in Bob, uh, Delhi in a group. I will try. Thank you. That is what. Not trying. Do it. Do it. Do it. There is no try in the world. Do it. No, do it. I will do it. I will do it. That's it. I will do it. any other question or comment lots of question in the mind geeta <laughs> i think uh, geeta is namaste guru ji and namaste dr tipis with all the questions and then have a long discussion with we can have in a time one google meet is good enough okay <laughs> okay today i am asking a question yeah uh, 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 when a person sit for yeah. one hour without yeah. thinking anything not possible then you are not a human being <laughs> you, you are in coma <laughs> you are your brain is dead <laughs> no no No, no, I'm asking, and I'm no, no, thinking of. No, no, you are wasting your time. Never do that. Then only, only thinking about the sorup of uh, his favorite deity. What There is, is that nothing. called? That itself, see, that itself. That means you are thinking about it. Huh. I'm thinking about Lord Ram, for yeah. example. That what is no. that called? That is called no, that meditation is called, or what? That is not called meditation. That is called dharana. That is dharana. dharana and then dhyana you will reach very close to dhyana okay and after some time that also will go and your mind will become totally blank and that okay. state is called the meditation but that you cannot tell somebody else i went into meditation then you will not even remember what has happened to you i had such meditative classes from my first visit meeting my guru himalayan master swami veda bharati i got a lecture of 40 minutes but it just went like 1 minute i never knew that he spoke something i don't even remember what he spoke but probably what he spoke and taught me is what i am telling today only i can say probably you may not even remember anything okay so your concentration is not there when you concentrate rama it is rama in front of you so meditation will not make your brain to think and work so you don't remember anything that state is a blissful state it's almost like a death that is why it is called samadhi then how can you say that i went into samadhi for 10 minutes i will just meditate for 10 minutes and come that means he is a bogus fellow and you cannot have you know give me i will give you 1 lakh rupees teach me meditation no you give me 1 lakh rupees can you give me a taste of water I cannot give the taste of water to you, right? It is your taste. How can I give the taste of water by paying money? So all these are not correct. It's it's a feeling. It's an enjoyment inside you. It's blissfulness. What you get when you think about your mother, happiness that anybody cannot think about your mother. You can only think. But but it's but just, when I. but when i think of lord ram i i also get happiness yeah that is fine but i don't know whether some bjp fellow thinks about lord ram what he will think he will think about uh, andolan he will think about the brick work there he may think about uh, earlier riot which has happened a judge thinking about lord ram will be thinking about the verdict which has happened another muslim fellow when he think about ram he will be thinking about uh, jumping on top of the tomb and then uh, smashing it so everybody cannot that's what i'm saying for you it is like you for my mother it's my mother your mother is your mother right and rama's picture yes. what rama's picture you are seeing is not rama's picture what i'm seeing 
understood i gave a lecture in uh, fiji on a ramayana conference do you know that there is a mapla ramayana mapla is muslim in kerala there is a ramayana called mapla ramayana the muslims have got a rama but they don't pronounce ra they pronounce lama mnc boss ji dilip ji is on phone that's why i'm asking mnc boss hello hello have you heard about mapla ramayana no sir no sir yeah you google mapla ramayana and hear that i come up only in kerala malabar there is a ramayana i am from malabar you are not from uh, malabar uh, yes right and there is a beautiful ramayana and it's a it's like a beautiful uh, no muslim song they also had ramayana arabic ramayana is also there telling uh, this uh, sri lanka also having a good ramayana oh, there are 83 varieties in one of the ramayana sita is the daughter of uh, uh, no uh, ravana in mapla ramayana there is a beautiful way of explaining <laughs> explaining the 10 heads all that is enjoyable so i am saying it's an epic so for you it is some concept so somebody else it could be some other concept thank you good nice tp sir tp sir dr tp this is the first time i am here. i am attending your uh, geeta class uh, it was it was a wonderful class i think i want to hear several times your geeta class is very very fantastic we had fantastic. last last year so many but i don't know why why you missed it i missed it i missed some i missed it but i i attended all the all the meeting but i missed your uh, but probably dilip ji did not put my geeta class in the normal uh, email uh, maybe like that only you are having a saturday sunday geeta class is there na i i was not able to attend that. Yeah, many people it's, did not uh, attend it's a good very good it, was, it is all there on the youtube yeah yeah, yeah. okay Uh, one i i got one doubt this uh, you said that uh, iran uh, iran uh, 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 no no several parts of the world were involved in that uh, our mahabharata story but i think this this iran and all other parts afghanistan all other parts of the world included in the mahabharata that yeah. we, uh, that may be the story story like that not story is, see actually uh, but, it is not uh, but, 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 it is actually I, that was a mistake see that mm. that may be the real thing came like that only that was the, all these uh, areas come under the boundary of uh, our our great mahabharata yeah maybe like that only i think yeah. see that is because even if you look at uh, um aryabhadas aryabhadiyam yes you can see description of the sun revolving around the earth it is explained with the, all these land becoming part of bharata correct oh, correct lenga vatsya pura lenga vatsya pura avandistane shurasura alayan lenga and vatsya pura vatsya pura means our gajarao if you connect lenga to gajarao and put a line a thread and that is called greenwich meridian for bharat yes yes correct okay and what are all the different uh, parts of the world which is lenga yam in lenga udayo yo lenga yam when it is udayam early morning in lenga ardha ratram half sunlight will be over evening will be romaga deshe ardha ratram syat in rom it will be evening you see we understood the earth was a globe so we did not describe india alone it even up to rom yeah that is correct so astamaye samiduryo eva that is how it says i think so astamaye udayo yo lankayam so astamayo savidure eva siddhapure madhyanno evavodyam romaga deshe vishayam sa ardharatram syat 
Rome. Rome is also mentioned. Rome, mm -hmm. is Rome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a Surya Kshetra in Rome, very yeah. near to uh, this uh, our Pope's uh, cathedral. I, I saw a Surya Kshetra, still it is there, that Surya Kshetra is there. It's there in Rome, yes. Because once upon a time, they also had nature as Bhagavan. The God was nature. Yep. Yeah. Can I ask again? Yes. When Gita Ji was talking about uh, meditation or worshipping, I have a question of myself. When you uh, visit a temple, which is not uh, the one you always visit, sometimes you start crying looking at the deity. Mm. What is that? Is it a bhakti yoga? Is it a punya karma of last life? Why do you feel a uh, lot of no, uh, energy over there in the center? Yeah. What, what because, could be the reason? All of us have been taught by the tradition, practices, rituals that yes, assume that I lost something, I have a feeling which I cannot express. Definitely, when a close relative comes to me, I will become tearful. Right? Similarly, you have a close person with you that is God, Bhagavan, Ishwara, Murti. So the Murti Sangalpa which you have is like a guardian for you. That is the concept which is gotten to each one of us. So what will happen automatically when you go to your person who is a mentor for you, who is a person who will take care of you, he will burst into tears. That's part of one of the bhakti. Bhakti bhava can be in different ways. Right? Bhakti itself is of nine different types. What is Mira's bhakti is not what is um, the bhakti of our Bhishma Vidamaha. The Bhishma Vidamaha's bhakti is not what is the mother of Krishna's bhakti. That is not the bhakti for Radha. Radha's bhakti is entirely different from her mother's, his mother's bhakti too. Pandava's bhakti is entirely different from Panjali's bhakti. Gandhari's bhakti is entirely different. So bhakti can be in different style. Bhakti can be hugging and then smiling and kissing. Right? We have a very peculiar temple in my place, Malabar where generally God is not gifted with the flowers. The pujari will hug and then put it. No, he will hug. The hugging is the prayer for him. Very rarely you will see such things. Can you imagine the deity murti is being hugged by the priest and that is how the, the uh, acharya is. Got it? So bhakti can be in different styles. Nine types of bhaktis are there. Got it. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Then in that case, uh, maybe one bhajan, Gabriel. See, how is his bhakti? Not nine. Actually, 11 types are explained. I missed it. Padaseva, Vandanam, Archanam, Smaranam, Kirtanam, Sravanam, and Madhuryam, Valsalyam, Sakhyam, Dasyam, Shandam. 11 types of bhaktis are mentioned. I was referring the notes which made by me when my guru taught me this. Gabriel, <laughs> are you singing? Yes. Okay. 
चित चोरा यशोदा केवा नवानी तचोरा गोपाल 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 गोवर्धन दारा गोपाल 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 गोवर्धन दारा गोपाल चित्त चोरा यशोदा के बार नवानी तचोरा गोपाल 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 गो दारा गोपाल 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 गो दाना दारा गोपाल चोरा यशोरा के बार नवानी तचोरा गोपाल तचोरा यशोरा के बार नवानी तचोरा गोपाल 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 गो दाना दारा गोपाल 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 गो पाल दारा गोपाल 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 गो पाल दारा गोपाल चित्त चोरा यशोदा के बाल नवानी तचोरा गोपाल एनीवन एल्स वांट टू सिंग आई जस्ट वांट टू से समथिंग या व्हेन यू मेंशन द बेस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ मेडिटेशन इज पुटिंग योर हेड ऑन योर मदर्स लैप दैट मेड मी वांट टू सिंग दिस सॉन्ग <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else to sing? Give us. I want to sing a Krishna bhajan. Ah, okay. Is all right? Yeah. Tum bhi nimuri kono khavar le. गोवर्धन गिरिधारी गोवर्धन गिरिधारी तुम भी निमोरी कौन खबर ले गोवर्धन गिरिधारी को वर्धन गिरिधारी को को वर्धन गिरिधारी मोर मुकुट सिर छत्र विराजे कुंडल सी छवि न्यारी ओ कुंडल की छवि न्यारी तुम भी निमोरी कौन खबर ले गोवर्धन गिरिधारी गोवर्धन गिरिधारी वृंदावन धेनु चरावे बंसी बजावे गिरिधारी वृंदावन में धेनु चरावे बंसी बजावे गिरिधारी ओ 
बंसी बजाए गिरिधारी तुम भी ने मोरी कौन खबर ले गोवर्धन गिरिधारी गोवर्धन गिरिधारी मीरा के प्रभु गिरिधर नागर चरण कमल पे बलिहारी मीरा के प्रभु गिरिधर नागर चरण कमल पे बलिहारी ओ चरण कमल पे बलिहारी ओ तुम भी ने मोरी कौन खबर ले गोवर्धन गिरिधारी गोवर्धन गिरिधारी गोवर्धन गिरिधारी जैसे सुजिता यू वांट टू सिंग टू चीनी का सहारा तेरा नाम रे मुझे दुनिया वालों से क्या रखा मेरे बनी वाली चीनी का सहारा तेरा नाम रे मुझे दुनिया वालों से क्या काम रे झूठी दुनिया झूठी बंधन झूठा है जगी सारा झूठा सास का आना जाना झूठी है ये माया ओ यहाँ साचो तेरो नाम बने वाली जीने का सहारा तेरा नाम रे मुझे दुनिया वालों से क्या काम रे रंग में तेरे रंग गिरी धरे छोड़ दिया जगे सारा छोड़ दिया जगे सारा बन गई तेरे प्रेम के जोगन लेकर मन तारा यहाँ साचो तेरो नाम रे बने वाली जीने का सहारा तेरा नाम रे मुझे दुनिया वालों से क्या काम रे थैंक यू गुरु मेरी Uh, I I only could listen to Mr. to the doctor S P just for a few minutes, but always he said very very interesting things. Okay. Um, uh, I am so glad to because I can to be here sitting and talking to you. Uh, blessings to all. Thank you very much. Um, go on. With this program, thank you, Guru Shi. Thank you, thank you very much. I saw uh, Roma Vani made a comment. Uh, 
So Namaskar. Guruji, I'm waiting to hear you. I, I'm speaking on the last day of the celebration because every day I have programs. I let other people to speak. <laughs> That's why. <right. laughs> so anyway, I'm so happy that TPS gave a beautiful presentation. Very, with a full openness, I saw it. A lot of time people create this the theology or philosophy, you know, whatever we call, in a dogmatic way. You know, sometimes we also stuck with those uh, marketing area. But when we interact with our students, we stick with our real nature of teaching. And you even see how many names of yoga are around the world now. Each teacher will put their own name to the yoga training programs. And so there's a big conflict going on around the globe. And it's very hard to control. At least we go with our, uh, we try, this is I'll say, we try our best. There's still a lot of chaos in this field. I remember when I was discussing with the Swami Bua to have the International Day of Yoga. Swami said, you know, this is going to make a big mess. <laughs> Still, we had to do it, you know. So, I see people make funny moments in yoga field. They have events related to the yoga day. And after you even acknowledge your internet of yoga, everybody wants to get the piece of cake. That's a very move. In the end, it became like a pathetic. We are trying to build up in a more genuine way. It's coming up slowly. So this coming Sunday, we have a yoga cruise. Yoga in the cruise. The th third year we are putting the program. Last two years I didn't go to the program. This year I'm going to join. And the uh, Organizer just called and he asked Gabriel to join in the program. So we may do some budgets, little talk, little exercise. And we have all, all the dignitaries from the Indian consulate and all the community leaders from tri-state tri area, means New York, New Jersey and Connecticut states. They'll be joining and some elected officials. A type of little entertainment, you know, like a mix of stuff. So let us see how to work. We are trying. Those who are in this area in New York, New Jersey, and ticket, or those who can drive to Flushing, Queens, you are welcome to be there. There's a charge, they put it $60 for a regular ticket and $100 for a VIP ticket. They want to cover the course. Not that bad. So we are partnering with them. And we are not involved with any money things. Only they handle the stuff. I am just as a guest speaker in the event. So let us see. Whatever ways we can go and do things for yoga, we'll do it. That's it. I saw TP's back, right? TP? Yeah, I am back. Oh. I had a problem in the system so i am joining system, okay. on my mobile yeah i'm hearing okay perfect so at least we we made this class today a discussion glad yeah. class eh? glad and thank you i'm <laughs> <laughs> i'm so happy tp is with us for more than a year now so always i can call him anytime that's the way I have around 20, 30 people in my circle. A lot of time we want to put programs. It is very hard to build up programs on time. And sometimes people say, oh, I'll do a partnership pro programs, then they disappear. That's a human nature. So this happened, but still we'll go on. And we are working on the yoga and sports uh, com competitions coming up. 
on 10 we have our discussion group for uh, related with that and 15 16 17 will have the competition global competition and 24th will be the final and the congresswoman from new york will be uh, giving a talk and i want to see her to watch this uh, competition and we want to proceed for a bill in new uh, in america because without legalized format format we cannot do anything in america so let us see how it will work out and let us see the upcoming days uh, on tomorrow uh, tomorrow is sugadev he is going to speak uh, he was with uh, some issue they went the long time and he started his own centers in europe and he's going to share his own experience thereafter that is eight wednesday andre from france will speak nine i'm trying to get a speaker and 11th we are trying to put a youth program I don't know how is the recording in upstate no idea so building up and 14 there's a peace event is happening with the yoga uh, some of the ngos are coming together to put a program and 25th is the major event from south american group mirtha bardo is going to lead that program uh, Martha Bada, did you send the invitation to the ambassador or you send it? Okay. So I'll make it. Yes, we sent invitation to everyone. Okay. And 21st is the International Day of Yoga. That's the eighth uh, annual program. Uh, Indian Consulate is leading the program at the Times Square. Times Square, we have morning to night yoga program. 12,000 people are going to go gather. And one section led by Indian Consulate of New York, and we'll be there in that program. And 12 o'clock, 12 p.m., we have our own celebration at the Church Center for the United Nations. Evening uh, 4.30, we'll have separate celebration at the United Nations headquarters. So three programs in that day. So I tried to keep the live from the Times Square I don't know the internet situation, but 12, uh, 12 p.m. we'll have the internet from uh, Church Center of the United Nations. 12 p.m. means 9.30, no, 12 a, uh, p.m. here means 9.30 p.m. in India. That's the time. It's a little late for Indians, but try your best. And let us see. So thank you, Dr. DPS, blessing us with your wonderful class sharing thoughts and opening up some kind of unwanted practices or the promotions happening in the world is needed to open up i'm so happy you brought that one yes thank you all for the cooperation good questions if there were no questions I would not have done it more than one hour, right? So thank you. Pranams and Namaskaram to everyone. So those who are in the meetings, please prepare comments and budgets, whatever you want to perform. We never know when we'll call you. Okay. See you tomorrow. Okay.